We will grow the economy so that we can get back to balance in a responsible and equitable way without cuts. Canadians can have confidence that this is a real, concrete plan to move forward. As the federal leaders reveal their platforms, many voters are wondering how each plan will affect them. The Canadian Taxpayers Federation has criticized the Liberal platform for what it says is reckless spending, and the group's also calling out the Conservatives for lacking credible plans, that's their words, to balance the budget. Franco Terrazano is the federal director of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. He joins us from Ottawa. Franco, how are you? I'm doing well, and thanks so much for having me on. Now, I just want to start with the Liberal Party's platform because it's the one that was released this week. How do you see, uh, you know, there, what, what are the areas that you see problems? Is it around the deficit? Is it spending? What are your, what are your concerns? Well, I, I think our biggest concern right now is that politicians are trying to largely ignore the $1 trillion elephant in the room, which is the federal government's debt. I mean, taxpayers are still waiting for a credible plan to balance the budget. We, we, we've seen the NDP, the Liberals, they have no clue how they're going to balance the budget. Now, the Conservatives, you know, they're paying lip service to balancing the budget within 10 years, but even their plan is incredible. Let me talk to you about uh, about deficit. Um, former parliamentary budget officer Kevin Page uh, has this Institute of uh, Fiscal Studies and Democracy, and, and he gave the Liberal platform a good grade yesterday. That doesn't mean anything other than he believes it's credible and affordable. Does that influence your thinking? Uh, no, no, it doesn't. I, I mean, what we're seeing from the Liberals is billions of dollars in new spending. That's what we're hearing from them. More boring, but we're not hearing a peep on when they're going to balance the budget. And I think we have to look at Trudeau's and the Liberals' track record here, right? Trudeau said the budget was going to balance itself. Well, that didn't happen, right? He promised in 2015 to balance the budget. That didn't happen either. And with that context and looking at the Liberals' platform released yesterday, uh, I don't think the Liberals have any intention of ever balancing the budget. Okay. What do you believe about the Conservatives? Because you're using the term lip service to describe their plan, which is to eliminate the deficit in 10 years. Well, you know, O'Toole, at least he's talking about balancing the budget, so I guess you got to give him a little bit of credit there. But but even his plan is incredible, right? Uh, there is no targets on actually reducing the deficit. They are barely finding any places to find savings, and their platform isn't even costed. So essentially what we're hearing from the O'Toole Conservatives is, hey, trust us, and in a decade we'll have done something good. There will be some Canadians, Franco, right now who are just saying, who, care about the, who cares about the deficit? That's not what I want to talk about. There are many other issues in the middle of a pandemic that we need to be focused on. Why, why are you um, so focused on the deficit? What is, uh, what's, what's about, what is it about the deficit? Well, you're right, there are many different issues, but uh, this is a pocketbook issue, and, and a lot of Canadians are worried about affordability, and rightfully so. And we have to remember right now, we're already more than a trillion dollars in debt federally, which means that each Canadian is on the hook for about $29,000 in federal government debt. And if these politicians don't find some savings, it's going to have to come from taxpayers one way or another. And I think a lot of Canadians, too, are rightfully wondering, you know, what type of nation do we want to leave to future generations? Well, under the status quo, under the the Trudeau government status quo, we wouldn't see a balanced budget until 2070. And if that happened, per person federal government debt would balloon to $67,000, right? So that would be a huge bill for Canadian kids and grandkids to eventually have to pay off. Where are you getting the 2070? 2070, that's from the parliamentary budget officer. That's the government's independent budget watchdog. They said under the Trudeau government status quo, now that's before all of this additional spending, uh, we might not see a balanced budget for nearly five decades. And if that were to happen, in the meantime, mm -hmm. Canadians would lose out on $3.8 trillion just in interest charges, right? That money can't go to health care. It can't stay in our pockets because that would be going to the bond fund managers just to serve the government debt. Yeah, and I grant you certainly that there there are very large interest charges that are associated with government debt, uh, not as large as they would be with, with corporate debt or personal debt, but there are significant charges nonetheless. But that, that number you're referring to, I think, is, is a scenario as opposed to the scenario that, is, that would take place. It's certainly a possibility. But I want to also talk to you about the, the NDP platform. Um, you, you, you touched on it earlier. This is a platform that has not been as yet costed by the parliamentary budget officer. What do you make of what you're hearing from the NDP? 
oh, well, the NDP's plan is essentially to raise taxes here, there, and everywhere, right? They want to raise income taxes on top uh, on top earners. They want to raise business taxes. Uh, they want to impose a wealth tax. They want to impose a so-called excess profits tax. But even with all of those ha tax hikes, I mean, the NDP still has no clue on how they're going to balance the budget. Now, I think the NDP wants Canadians to think it's just going to be big businesses or the wealthy that end up paying for these taxes. But the truth is, it's going to be everyday Canadians who end up feeling the pain through higher prices at the till and lower job opportunities. Some of the NDP plan, um, and the Liberals speak about this as well, around minimum tax, look at really going after the largest of those companies, the companies that, in their words, have profited the most off of the pandemic or during the pandemic. What is your concern specifically about taxing those entities? Well, specifically, one of the key concerns both with the NDP and the Liberals is like they're not even going to be balancing the budget. So after these politicians are done soaking the rich, I think the huge concern for everyday Canadians is, well, then where are they going to look for more money next? Right. If these politicians don't actually save some money, uh, rein in the deficit spending, then it's going to be end up being everyday Canadians who end up picking up that tab through higher taxes. OK, Franco, thanks very much. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.